Right, we'll San see. Francisco is challenging the defensive lineup of the shortstop. Welcome to an infield shift challenge. This play is reviewable, and as we discussed at the beginning of the year, the most common rule that everyone knows about, the restriction, two infielders per side. We go into a lot more depth in our rules change video we did prior to the 2023 season, so be sure to watch that. But for now, let's talk about the particular play that we have here. Ground ball to shortstop. Bogart slides to his left, throws to first, one away. Kapler talks to Wills, the plate umpire, who talks to Eddings, the crew chief, and this is a challenge for infielder depth. Infielders must be within the boundary. It's a dotted line on this graphic, which means no part of their body, including their feet, may touch outside the bound when the pitcher begins their delivery. Shifting. Now, we can't see where the second base bag is there. He's definitely not on the outfield grass there, though. Yeah, it's not the... It's the not that one. It's not the cleats on the grass. Small issue there. The timing of this is, according to this document from MLB, on the rubber. But MLB also has a problem. The if you rules. must have both feet... Their documents also say when the pitcher begins delivery for this same rule. So what is it, rubber or delivery? Well, technical faux pas notwithstanding, we're going to go with the least restrictive of the two, which is at the time the pitcher begins delivery. Right, and that's when the pitcher starts his motion. Regardless, this is where San Diego starts the replay. Base bag is there. He's definitely not on the outfield grass there, though. Yeah, it's not the. It's not that one. But so there's no more of uh, the pitcher starts in motion and you're walking in to here, right? You have to start within that within that outer boundary. That was San Diego's replay, but replay review has a whole host of angles to look at. Here's how San Francisco covered it. Well, he's in contact with it right now with the right foot. OK, so right there. Remember the instructional video, though. You can't have your primary on the grass step in for your secondary on the dirt. You have to be on the dirt the entire time. So when San Diego cues this replay, Take a look, definitely not both heels on the dirt of the infield. They're starting their replay way too late. San Francisco He's coming out going, what's the problem? Only like Mel can do. Well, right on time. That's what MLB sees back in replay review. And if you're angry at a human for calling this because it's super close, remember, this play is officiated by LIDAR. There was a shift violation. The call's overturned. The batter returned to the plate with a 1-1 count. San Francisco will retain his challenge. What? I don't know what the shift violation is. Bob Melvin wondering what? Like all of replay, it's designed to correct the obvious miss or the obvious play like this, and then gets used for something that's like one or two inches. Thanks for the question. Please like and subscribe for more. Did you know this is not even the first time that the Padres broadcast has started a replay too late, thus misinforming the fans? Click here to watch a Marlins Padres video about catcher collisions at home plate, where the Padres similarly start the replay too late and thus are perplexed as to why the umpires called what they called. Sure would have been answered had you started the replay about two seconds earlier. Call is confirmed. The runner's out. There is no blocking of the plate. And click here to hear Hawk Harrelson go crazy because his team in Chicago started its replay too late. So the White Sox missed a crucial obstruction call that the Cubs, because they started their replay on time, definitely saw. Get your money's worth, Ozzy. That's BS. PA went back to tag initially. Pagan got a great jump, and right there was the contact.